Bounty, ain't I black enough for you? Bounty, don't have the same type friends as you. Bounty, didn't grow up in a inner city. Bounty, what is your problem with me? Bounty, you say cause most of my friends be white. Bounty, cause I don't pray and I don't fight. Bounty, so then where do I fit in? Bounty, because it seems I just can't win. Bounty, so what's it mean to be black? Bounty, you think that I ain't got your back? Bounty, I am black and I am proud. Bounty, don't need to prove or say it loud. Bounty, just cause you think I don't act right. Bounty, you think I act like I am white. Bounty, my skin and history is all I need. Bounty, I can't fake that, I can't deceive. Bounty, I'd never try to, never hide. Bounty, I wear my melanin with pride. Hello, my name's Jade Anuka. I'm an actor and a poet. And when I was asked to speak at TEDx Peckham, I jumped at the opportunity. I'd heard of TEDx before and always thought that those who spoke came with great respect and expertise. I recently did a play where the writer was inspired to begin writing off the back of a TED talk she saw. My brother and various other intellectuals I know send me YouTube links of talks that have inspired or connected with them. So I said, yes, of course, what an honor. It was only a few minutes later that I began to worry about what I would actually talk about. Well, I have and have so much to say, but often use the medium of poetry to say it, or actions. I find that personally, my actions can say so much. So I began with a poem and will perhaps end with a call to action. Black Panther was a landmark film. It showed for the first time a black-led superhero blockbuster film with powerful, not restricted to just the domestic and romantic women, set in Africa. Little black boys and black girls had heroes they could look up to, imperfect leaders that looked like them. Aspiring actors, designers, directors could aim higher than maybe they ever imagined. These Disney princesses weren't growing up aspiring just to marry a man and have a baby. They were scientists and sisters and lovers and jokers and part of a team to protect their home. It's something I would have loved to have seen when I was younger, something I'm so glad I got to see now. So I jumped on the hashtag Black Panther Challenge bandwagon and organized a free screening for local kids right here in Peckham at my local cinema, the best, the one and only Peckham Plex. <laughs> Uh, you can follow it, actually. You can find out all about it on the hashtag Black Panther Peckham. I just thought it was an important film for people to see and didn't want those without the funds or access for cinema trips to miss out. Also, young people watching it in a room full of their peers has that extra special added shared experience bonus. I crowdfunded the money and hope to do another screening with the next film that can inspire and boost the next generation to aim higher, work harder and believe that the possibilities are there for them. I hope and believe there will be more films, more TV shows, more plays, more positive media presence of those deemed other. So those made to feel other feel less alone, more included, better represented, more allowed to fail. Because the chance to fail is a chance to stand up and stand up we must. A vote. We all deserve to have a voice, our fundamental right for choice. A hundred years ago, for some, a big step for women on how their lives are run. Their choice, their way, their vote, their right. But it wasn't got without a fight. A milestone being marked nationwide, and with every goal reached, there's another in sight. This landmark for women is progress for all, a right to vote and a chance to fall. For a chance to fall is a chance to stand up. And stand up we must, we must, we must. Because being empowered to vote is our greatest expression of choice, an opportunity for fulfillment and a need to have a voice. No matter your color, no matter your creed, sexuality or gender, it's the same way that we bleed. So don't forget the struggles and don't forget the fight. But let's celebrate all women and our fundamental right to vote, to speak, to choose. Now, I was commissioned to write that poem this year for the 100th anniversary of the first women in Britain being allowed to vote. Now, I say the first because, as we know, it wasn't all women, just some, and not women of colour, nor women from the lower classes, not women considered other. There's no point being at the table if no one's listening. You don't need to be louder, be creative. As an actor, I spend my life speaking other people's words. I use poetry to have my say. 
As an actor at this stage in my career, I'm not usually part of the discussion or at the table when the initial decisions are being made. I try as much as I can to choose work that I believe in, but that's a luxury. Often being able to work is all the choice you have. So when you're given that chance, that opportunity, that seat at the table, how do you use it? What do you say when you have so much to share? Will you be judged by what you didn't say, what was left out? And if you're the only one like you there, it's as if you have to speak for all women, or all black people, or all non-straight humans, all the other. I feel the weight of my ancestors, of my sisters and daughters. The color of my skin carries history's oppression. The color of my skin will not be ignored. Choose love, not aggression. I feel the weight when it's brought into question. I can't represent us all, but feel like I'm asked to. My body is mine. You can only really speak for yourself. You can only really live your life, your truth. The more work I get as an actor, the longer I grow after my passion, the more opportunities I have to be heard and listened to. The more I fear I will be misrepresented, misquoted, misunderstood. To quote a line from my favorite superhero, with great power comes great responsibility. My eyes hurt, my back is pained, I am a woman. I work hard, I play hard, I am a woman. I drink pints, I drink wine, I am a woman. I like dresses, I like shirts, I am a woman. I eat pizza, I eat cake, I am a woman. I go running, I go boxing, I am a woman. I like guys, I like girls, I am a woman. I bleed and I argue, I am a woman. I take the bins out, I cook the dinner, I am a woman. I have sofa days and I fart, I am a woman. I am married, I am not, I am a woman. I sing and I dance, I am a woman. I am sexy, I am cool, I am a woman. I want kids, I don't want them, I am a woman. I scream and I smile, I am a woman. I read books, I write poems, I am a woman. I am hard and I am soft, I am a woman. I walk tall, can feel small, I am a woman. I'm chubby, I'm skinny, I am a woman. I wear makeup or I don't, I am a woman. I'm an actor, I'm an actress, I'm a woman. Phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. Now that poem was inspired by Maya Angelou, who I love. She was a black woman who turned otherness into greatness, beauty and power. Women are not allowed to fail. Black women are not allowed to fail. Non-straight women are not allowed to fail. Because if you do, if you're given that one chance, and you do, and you mess up, will that chance ever be given again? When you feel the weight of that one chance, is it any surprise that people stay quiet? When only those who are loud are heard, when you are judged before you've even opened your mouth, when you're judged because of the color of your skin, what's between your legs or who you choose to sleep with, is it any surprise that those who feel other are the most unlistened to in our society? Those who are consciously or otherwise constantly asking themselves questions like, do I belong? Do I fit in? Do they even want me there? Have I waited too long? Should I have to ask, will I stay for long? Am I a phase? Do I even want a seat at this table? Maybe I should build a new one. Is that even possible? These small everyday thoughts that can chip away at a person's belief in themselves. These small everyday thoughts that can make you start to believe the falsities that others put on you and those like you. The doubts and insecurities that can develop by never being told you can. Inadequacy. The feeling I get when I'm sick of me. Unfortunately, can't get away from me, so stay stuck with me. Inadequacy. Not being as good as what I want to be. Unfortunately, I'm stuck with me, trying to be the best version of me I can be, but inadequacy pulls me inside of me. Can't see the strengths, only focus on the bad of me. Inadequacy, oh boy, it fucks with me. Stops me moving forward to the place that I want to be. Unfortunately, can't get away from me, so I'm stuck with this feeling of inadequacy. <laughs> Breaking glass ceilings and being the first is great, but comes tinged with sadness for me. 
Sadness that it's taken so long to break, that those opportunities were so few or even non-existent before. It helps to see what's possible. Only one person can be the first, but think how many others can follow in their footsteps. Now, there is so much to say. There's so much worth fighting for. You don't need to be louder. Be creative. I try and do it with poems. I tell them, don't diminish my feelings that were. Don't compare what was to what is now. Don't make me feel less. Don't try to shrink me. I am and feel what I am and feel. What you want me to be is your prerogative. But it is not the truth, the future, or in this case, even a possibility. Don't force your restrictions on my choices. Don't make boxes that I don't fit in, then try to fold me so I do. If you thought I'd be something else, thought I'd love someone else, thought I'd be easier to understand, thought I'd conform, I convulse at your ideas of what I should be. You are very much mistaken. I listen to my heart and follow my gut. I try to act on instinct and do what feels true. You do you, and I'll do me. Don't cage me. I need to be free. And so finally, as promised, here is my call to action. When you get that chance, that opportunity, that, that seat at the table, get creative and remember to pull up another seat for the next person. Thank you.